Hey, hey, everybody! Welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna be talking about Super Crooks, which is an anime that you can see on Netflix right now. We're onto something. We're onto something. Okay. By the way, I remind you this is a spoiler review, so bear with me. I'm gonna tell you the story, I'm gonna tell you how much I liked it, but I'm gonna tell you the story. So basically, this is set in the Jupiter's Legacy universe. So there's a group of superheroes, they got superpowers, and then they got descendants and, and friends and such, and they got superpowers in turn, okay? So it starts on that premise like that. And when you get superheroes, you also get supervillains. Our protagonist is one of them. Is a boy from somewhere America, small, smallville America, as they say. And he discovers he has some electric powers, like he can generate electricity and such. So he comes from a destructive family. And uh, he's a teenager, so he says, oh, well, maybe that's my way out. I'm going to be a superhero. Let's see how it goes. So he tries like to levitate in the first episode in the pilot. Problem is, he fries everybody in a pool. And that ca causes a cascade of accidents. That is truly dark humor, uh, which I really like, fucking like. And uh, basically it's like a cascade of disasters, like a, a truck crashes into a church and a, a, a gas station explodes, the whole town is shot. Not very believably, the kid doesn't go to the chair, because I, I would just... Eh, who, who wants to get to court anyway? Let's just kill the bastard. But no, no, he... He makes it. So basically, well, they let him go. So every, everything was an accident. What a pity. His best friend, uh, who was going to be his photo official photographer, it's so sad about this. And uh, pay attention to that character because he will be important in the end. So yeah, now the, the Johnny, that's the kid with the superpowers, he realizes, okay, well, Let's electroshock this ADM. Let's get money. And, and that's it. What's he gonna do? He's gonna be a super villain. So flash forward a few years. Now we're dealing with an adult in a, and he's exiting a supermax prison, okay? The supermax prison is an important place because uh, it's a private entity. It's a private prison in which all the supervillains are stored, right? So it's it's like a terrible, gritty place, you know, everything, every superhero villain is like, it's gonna uh, shock, more than a shock collar, it's like a shock bodysuit or something, a contraption to to just keep, uh, keep you in check, no? So, well, he gets out of prison, he, he finish, uh, he beats his time, and he, he does his time and everything, and he gets reacquainted with uh, his hot girlfriend and her hot girlfriend is this babe here which uh, and who's dancing at the beginning of every episode on the theme song and, and probably that's the winner for us us guys in the in the whole pilot in the whole you know in the whole situation <laughs> Anyway, so this lovely girl tells him, uh, let's not keep being villain. I'm studying for a master for an MBA now. Maybe we can do something else with our lives and they're being crooks. Uh, because when Johnny gets out of prison, there's other people waiting for him. And yeah, they're regular Frisco guys, regular Frisco fellows, until you discover they have superpowers of their own. And uh, there's like a, a sort of silver surfer. There's like a, a guy that can teleport them all. That always says, "Yes." He reminded me of the Simpsons guy. And uh, and 
there's the funniest of the bunch is a black like you know like a rasta man something like that but his superpower is i bring you bad luck and he's like okay how does that even work? I don't want to know, but I end up knowing. So, okay, fine. Uh, so his friends just put him again on, on the bad uh, on the bad path again, saying, ah, don't listen to her. We're going to just do some crook shit. We're going to rob places. They live in San Francisco, okay? Uh, which, Frisco is depicted ch terribly clean, I mean, there's no poop on the streets, and there's no syringes, and there's no bombs. And if they were, they're all gonna die in the streets. Because uh, they started robbing jewelry stores, like, very coordinated, very professional-like, and everything. Like a, a proper haste from the movies, basically. And uh, what happened, they send them the biggest superhero they can find. They call him the Mountain Man. Okay. And... <laughs> It's so ridiculous. It's so big. And he doesn't mind just destroying the whole street and such. <laughs> so, okay. This, this wannabe super crooks basically own that guy. And the, like the... You, no, I don't want to call him the Justice League. But it's, it's the League of Superheroes send uh, another one of the big ones to, to deal with this guy and, and me. I haven't, but if you've read the comics, Praetorian is pretty famous. He's got like weird superpowers and uh, random, that's the thing. He's, everybody says he's got like 200 superpowers and they manifested random. And some are pretty useless, but others are like very badass. So he, he turns instead of one guy, he turns into four so he can chase them all. And it's uh, it's pretty pretty ridiculous. He he gets them all very easy and such. And in the end, Johnny Bolt, this uh, electric superhero, uh, is not capable of defeating him. But suddenly, wow, Praetorian, which is very who is very cruel with uh, with uh, crooks and everything, he lets them go. Magically, and nobody knows why, and everybody's surprised. And where did he find mercy? Oh, and turns out that Casey was lurking in the background, this lovely blonde, lovely blonde over there, and she's a telepath. She's a telepath. That's why he let him go. So, Praetorian is like he's got his bug up his ear, right, and says. Why did I do that? I don't do that. <laughs> he did anyway. Anyways, next act. It's Casey saying to Johnny Bolt, okay, you want to be a crook? Be my guest. But uh, we're going to do this with the real professionals, really. The guys that really, really do the thing. And, and finally, they, they managed to, to get up a, a team on that. And this team is going to be the one... Oh, this is Praetorian, by the way. Wow, disgusting bastard. <laughs> so, Johnny is going to meet uh, this lovely man. And by the way, can you cover the whole... Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. You don't want to see me. <laughs> this... All lovely man in the middle is the heat. The heat used to be a big thing as supervillains go in the 70s, but he never had superpowers. He had like two big ass flamethrowers. That was it. On the left you go to Diesel Brothers. They basically can regenerate everything, even if their brain like dies or something. Uh, basically they, they can regenerate. So our friend, the Heat, has been hired by uh, Count Orlok, which is uh, a body supervillain who was defeated, who was defeated by the Union of Justice, and he's hiding in Romania. Hmm? And they're gonna need a team to do uh, basically the job, the main job, and and we'll see how it goes. But firstly. Um, pop, 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 pop. 
let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 I remember, I remember, right. Basically, one of the team is in custody. TK is very important for the team. We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see why in, in, a, in a more, as, as the season goes on, right? Because it's, it's a few episodes. So they have to spring him up from a plane that is going to supermax. But the catch is there is a superhero watching the plane. And that guy is the gladiator, which is super strong and everything, but he's not very bright. Long story short, uh, they manage to spring him up. And Casey hypnotizes uh, the gladiator. Uh, he will be important later in, uh, in the final act. But for now, they, they live in there and, and that's it. No? And it's very important, the heat passes on a modu an MO for, for the team. And that is that you never kill anybody. Okay, you do your haste, you get rich, but you never kill anybody that you can avoid killing, basically. So that does the thing. Let's bring him up and a final superhero. You see to the right, uh, well, TK is wearing the yellow jacket, the ghost, which is like a, in, an infiltration supervillain, uh, is already on the team. And the last one to join, they didn't need, any, they didn't need him to free TK, is, um, oh, this fellow, uh, the weatherman. I think it was the weatherman. He can manipulate uh, the weather and create, and TK creates illusions, right? That's the thing. So the plan is getting this helm for Count Olog, which is basically half of his power. It's, uh, he's hiding in Romania, he's paid the heat to recover it, and uh, they're doing this job away from the network. The network is the supervillain like uh, mafia which pays tribute to the bastard. The bastard is another supervillain that's super rich and everything. They also manage the supermax prison. That's where they recruit the, the supervillains. And the point will be to do this job away from the network. Well, and the plan is to lure the main superheroes away from the from the Union of Justice Tower in New York. Uh, so, and two of, of the team, TK and, and the Weatherman, are going to create this massive illusion with zombies and a super villain they thought defeated um, in Pittsburgh. So far enough for the Union of Justice to go and, uh, and so that the building is unguarded. And everything goes smoothly, they create an illusion so they don't get recognized and everything, until they realize the, the superheroes left one behind. They, did, they didn't, and it's very funny because they left him in the bathroom, it was that ridiculous. <laughs> the, who is this guy? Ah, we don't even care, let's go. <laughs> and who's that guy? Praetorian. And Praetorian this time, is aware of Casey, so he's not going to trick him twice. He's not going to trick him twice. <laughs> anyway, the thing is, Praetorian is also a blabbermouth because he tells them it's all replicas and the real helm is not exposed publicly. It's in a in a big ass safe. So the ghost manages to to fetch on that helmet, and they all teleport. Uh, to the Count Castle, but uh, it was terrible because the bastard and Praetorian, they don't explain that much how they did it, but they realize it. They realize it was Count Orlok, so they, they travel to the castle in, in Romania where, where they're going to be paid by Count Orlok and and give him the helm, but nope, they don't manage it. 
they don't manage it. The bastard uh, has a superpower of his own and it's making people's heads explode. It's like very gruesome. Sometimes funny, but, but very, very gruesome. And um, he's just going to kill Count Orlok and he's going to let the team off the hook. Not because of Casey this time. But because he said, I'm old, I'm gonna retire. If you cross paths with me again, or or if the Praetorian catches you doing crime, I'm gonna kid. I'm gonna get you killed. So he lets him off the hook. He's retiring and everything. But from them all, from there on, the team falls apart. Johnny and Casey were looking to turn the page. They wanted to marry, but uh, again, they're in Frisco, and Johnny's friends lure him away to steal shit. Uh, because you say, uh, if you don't have money, you're going to get a divorce. So. And uh, what happened? That Praetorian catches them again, and, and he puts uh, he puts Johnny away in the Supermax prison, and he's sentenced to five more years. It's not very realistic, but hey. No, it's... Uh, it's uh, so he doesn't make it to the wedding, Casey Sozon is upset, She'll end up leaving the, the master she wanted to do, so it was, uh, it was really, really terrible. The rest of the team falls apart, and, but from, from their misery comes uh, redemption. No? Uh, there is uh, another supervillain that's going to inherit uh, the Bastard's empire. And uh, the Heat is trying to cheat in his casino. But instead of, of getting killed straight away, the Salamander dares him to come up with a hundred million dollars in a week. Or else he kills him. So the Heat runs back to Casey and Johnny. He's all worked up. He's all feeling weak and everything. But eventually all the, all the team members are going to be returning. You know, the, the brothers uh, were doing like some kind of, of wrestling. Um, and the other, well, the ghosts have become an architect, so they, are, they all have moved on with their lives, but eventually they, they go back to help, uh, to help uh, the heat, right? And there's a problem. They, they're going to realize they're going to need one more, and that one more is the one that can defeat, actually, Praetorian, and that is the Gladiator. The Gladiator and, and Praetorian have been working together for some time, and the gladiator end up realizing this guy is calm. He didn't know exactly he was a supervillain, but he was, uh, he was close. So they bl uh, the gladiator, uh, important thing, is in the closet. He's, uh, he's again in the closet. So the team gets evidence on him, on Grinder or something, you know, in the internet, and blackmails him. <laughs> that part is also pretty hilarious because he gets like a date. And, and in real life, he's like a balding middle-aged guy. <laughs> he's got nothing heroic about him, but hey, that's him. That's him. So they, they blackmail him, and he he gets... Uh, and they tell him also that Praetorian is a crook in disguise, and he's in, in the bus's payroll, and, and definitely he agrees to, to just go along for the ride just to get him, basically. And the plan to get all the money they need is to rob another casino. And the bastard in retirement has gone to an island in Japan, probably fictional, and uh, it's a very risky plan because he can blow his the, he can blow the red at, at any second. It's very risky. And Roddy Diesel, the guy top on top left, uh, and Casey are gonna pose as uh, like a sort of architects are going to present the bastard with a project which is <laughs> pretty hilarious because it, it, it's supposed to be a, a real time machine or something and and in the spoiler for the ending uh, Rowdy Diesel will end up developing the machine which is pretty hilarious because you see him as a big drunken bastard very strong and, and very brutish but he's got the brains so that, that's pretty fun that's pretty fun. And uh, they managed to speak to the bastard. And 
she touches uh, the bastard. That is very important. And I'll remind you that she is a telepath, okay? And after a couple of episodes, they're the, the kind of final, you'll, you'll see a heist that is really compelling, is very well, very well narrated. It's, it, it reminded me a lot of Ocean's Eleven, right? Very well told, very exciting, lots of turns, lots of complications, and, and you'll love it, you'll love it. So they will make it to Salamander's money. This is good, like a magical suitcase that up, is full of millions of millions, and it can contain basically like uh, the DuckTales treasure. <laughs> it was really, really fun. And uh, they, they give some evidence to Johnny's uh, journalist friend, the photographer, and they pin the heist on the salamander, the, the bastard second in command in the, in the network. So the salamander returns, and the final scene is absolutely brutal. He blows everybody's brains in the room. And he did because he had been hypnotized. The moment Casey touched him, he was completely hypnotized. He never realized a thing about the heist. And he was just completely in his own illusion. So he couldn't figure out reality from, from Dale. All in all, I say this is a great show. And this is the bastard. Ah, oh, what a motherfucker. <laughs> What a motherfucker you are, bastard. <laughs> anyway, that's me again. <laughs> right, so, as I say, I think it's a very binge-worthy show. It's not going to take you long to watch it because there's not that many episodes. But it's really compelling, it's really cool, and I think you're going to love it. So don't miss on the, on the opportunity of watching Super Crooks on Netflix. And I'll be up uh, soon, soon enough with uh, some more videos, some more comments. There's been a lot going on with this uh, Santa INC that, uh, on HBO that will not get a second season that, that we learned today. And eventually, well, that's for the best, you know, because the reviews were dreadful with this show. It wasn't really <laughs> worth it. But again, that's what you get when you make a show, just for the whole purpose of insulting an audience. Instead, Super Crooks is a very entertaining story. It tells something compelling. It tells, in, in a ver it tells that in a very informal way, in a way. But there is a motivation, there is a, um, a thread that it follows. And I like the callback to the friendship between the journalist, the photographer, and, and Johnny Bolt in, from the first episode. It's like, I'm tying a story, a story together. So that, that I like very much about, the, about Super Crooks. So anyway, I'll see you next time, and I hope you, you enjoyed this spoiler review. Catch up some other time.